It's the greatest aviation mystery of all time. Collision 370, contact with Jamil 120, How can a Boeing 777 with 239 people on board simply vanish without a trace? The answer lies somewhere at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Imagine if we could empty the oceans, letting the water drain away to reveal the secrets of the sea floor. Now, we can. Using the latest underwater scanning technology, piercing the deep oceans, and turning accurate data into 3D images. This time, with unique access to the official investigation, key mysteries of Malaysia Airlines 370. What lessons lie amid the wrecks of previous air disasters? Can Cold War technology extract vital clues from the deep ocean? And if the plane is found, what secrets could lie hidden in the tangled wreckage? Armed with their new map of the sea floor, the search team deploys the latest in subsea technology. Traveling deep underwater, these towed sleds begin to scan the seafloor. And they will be guided by a game-changing new clue. It comes from further detailed analysis of the final Inmarsat signal from MH370. Engineers crunch the numbers and discover something shocking. In its final moments, the plane descends rapidly. Almost certainly because after seven and a half hours in the air, it's run out of fuel. Boeing engineers then simulate what happens when a 777 exhausts its fuel, making it possible for the first time to recreate the likely final minutes of MH370's mysterious flight. The right engine flames out first. The autopilot compensates for the imbalance with a hard left turn. Minutes later, the second engine flames out. With no power, the autopilot switches off, leaving MH370 in a long spiral descent. Every Boeing simulation, the crash site lies within 29 miles of the seventh arc. These dramatic new insights immediately reduce the size of the search area from 463,000 square miles to just 23,000. But that's still three and a half times the size of the search area for Air France 447. This is a massive search area. It's magnitudes larger than any previous search I've ever worked on. Deep sea salvage expert Andy Sherrill analyzes all the data that's been gathered underwater. Oddly enough, when I first heard about MH370's disappearance, my wife was in labor um, with our first child. The news came on about the disappearance of the flight, and my wife looked at me and she said, now that's a job you're not going to get involved with. Andy has been involved ever since. Using his knowledge from six previous investigations, including a search for Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Electra.
As soon as the underwater scanning begins, it identifies shapes that could be man-made. So when you're reviewing the side scan sonar, it comes down in a waterfall display and you can see the, the different intensities of uh, you know, soft sand versus hard rock. Guided by the scans, the team investigate 80 locations in detail, but find no trace of MH370. Then, in May 2015, the sonar picks up something new and exciting. It was a typical looking debris field that um, definitely warranted uh, more investigation. The debris field covers an area similar in size to the wreckage of Air France 447. Could this finally be the remains of MH370? Sonar paints a very good picture of the seafloor and what you've got there, but it's not perfect. It's not good enough to say with certainty that a certain item might be uh, an aircraft debris field. You actually have to investigate with visual means. 